All right. Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Don't forget to like. Sorry. Never mind. <laughs> I think this lesson is pretty cool. We're gonna talk about some of the concepts we've been going over, and it's all gonna to come together in a beautiful picture known as a graph, okay? We're gonna be talking about graphing motion. There are two ways we can graph motion. We're gonna do one way today, and then next week we'll talk about the other way. Um, when we're talking about motion, We've talked about two ways I can measure motion. So if something's moving, I can measure two basic things about it. Do you remember things we've talked about in terms of what I can measure about a moving thing? The speed. I can measure how fast it's going which would be, I could do the speed or the velocity are kind of different ways of measuring how fast it's going. What's another thing I can measure about something's motion? We got speed, velocity, which are kind of similar ideas. Yes? Distance. Distance, which is how far something moved, right? So, or instead of distance, I could also measure its displacement. Displacement, right? Distance and displacement both have to do with how far it moved. Speed and velocity have to do with how fast it moved, right? So two basic ideas. For graphing today, we're gonna look at how far something moved, AKA displacement. So we're gonna be looking at displacement versus time graphs, okay? We're gonna be making line graphs, right? And I'm gonna have two axes. What's the horizontal one? That's x-axis and then I have y, okay? On my x-axis, we're gonna have time, which is gonna be my independent variable. Have you guys heard about independent and dependent variables? One person has. We were supposed to go over this last chapter, but I accidentally skipped it, so we're going to talk about it. Again. Right. Okay. And on my y-axis, we'll put displacement, which is the dependent variable. Okay. We'll talk about what independent and dependent variable. Are. Taking notes. Okay. So, in an experiment. The independent variable and the dependent variable both change, okay? So I have time and I have displacement and they're both changing, but what distinguishes them is what I do with them. Okay, this is my independent variable, this is my dependent variable. Okay, since we didn't cover this last chapter, my independent variable is the thing that changes on its own, or it's the thing that the scientist changes on purpose. In this context, obviously time changes on its own, right? I don't have to like turn a crank to make time move. But in other experiments, the thing, the variable on the x-axis could be something else that I am intentionally changing. dependent variable also changes, but I do something else with it. I don't change it myself, I measure it. So the dependent variable is the thing that we are observing or measuring as it changes related to the independent variable. Oh, actually, Tori, I have a pile right here. Just throw it on the pile. Thanks. 
A fun way you can remember which one goes where is if I have my graph with the x-axis, I can make a letter I. For independent variable, it goes on the x-axis. On the y-axis, I can make the letter D, which helps me remember that the dependent variable goes on the y-axis. So that can be helpful, maybe. So the independent variable is the thing that changes on its own or is changed by the scientist. The dependent variable is the thing we are measuring or observing, which in this case is time and displacement. seven graphs I want to look at <coughs> of different types of motion. Let's start simple. Let's say I'm moving forward at constant speed. I want to look at what would the graph look like. Okay, so my time is going to be in seconds, right? So every second I'm covering a certain amount of distance. Uh, let's say I'm starting at a starting point. What's my displacement at the starting point? How far away am I? Super hard question. If I'm at the starting point, how far away am I? How many meters? Zero. Zero. Thank you. Someone here. Okay. Zero. So we're starting at zero displacement, right? And then when the timer starts, if I'm going constant speed, what that means is I'm going the same distance every second, which means that this graph would look like a straight line, yes? So in this graph, in one second I go two meters, in another second I go two more meters, in another second I go two more meters, right? Constant speed means I'm going the same distance every second. We okay with this? On your notes, you don't need to put numbers or stuff. All I want you to know is the shape, okay? So on your notes, you can just make a graph, time, displacement, and just draw a straight line. Right now, I just wanna focus on the shape of the graph depending on the type of motion. What if I was going constant speed, but going backwards? I would be going down. If I'm going backwards, that means I'm coming back to where I started, right? I started far away, and I'm coming back to the starting line, so it would go down. But it's still a straight line because I'm covering the same amount of distance every second. So I went backwards two meters in the second, then I went backwards two more meters, then I came back two more meters, constant speed, just a different direction. different combinations. Ready for the next one? Or do I need to go back? <coughs> we'll go forward. Next one. Let's say I'm going forward, but now, instead of going constant speed, I'm speeding up. So now I'm covering more distance, but every second I cover a further distance, and then I cover more distance in the next second. Then the next second I go even farther. Can we imagine what that graph would look like? It's not a straight line anymore. It's curved. 
in the first second, I covered one meter. And then in the next second, I went two meters. And then it looks like I went five. And then I went 10 more meters. And then I went 20 more meters. And then I went 30 more meters, right? If I'm covering more distance every second, then I must be speeding up. So this one's curved. slowing down. What is going to be the opposite? Maybe. So let's think about this. So I'm, what direction am I going? Forward. So let's say I'm starting at my starting point and I'm going to be going forward. So I'm going to be getting farther away. So I'm going to end up farther away. But at first, I go really fast and cover a lot of distance. Then I cover a little less distance, and then less distance, and then less. It's going to curve like that. So if I were gonna make a graph of a car in a drag race, right, it's sitting at the starting line, it gets the green light and it goes, it covers a big distance in one second, right? And then let's say it crosses the finish line. And so it's gotta slow down, right? So it's slowing down in the next portion, I cover a little less distance, right? And then after that, I cover even less distance and then I cover less distance. Right? If, the, if you put your brakes on the car, the car's still moving forward, right? So I'm still getting farther away from my starting point. I'm just covering less distance each second. Okay? So this is moving forward, but slowing down. Cool. What combination do we need next? We're going to do all the combinations. Which one have we not done? There's two we haven't done. We've done forward speeding up, forward slowing down, forward constant speed. We've done backward constant speed. We need to go backwards again. We need to go backwards doing what? Speeding up. And it's slowing down, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's do backwards slowing down. <clears throat> so let's say I start far away. And I'm going to end up back at my starting point. Right? I started far away, and I'm going to back up to the starting point. Here's the question though. So a straight line with constant speed, slowing down is gonna be curved. But here's the question, is it this or is it this? What do you think, Jensen? Theoretically. Top one, top one or bottom one? Theoretically, it could be either one. It has to be one of them, it can't be both. One of these is I'm coming backwards and speeding up, the other ones is I'm coming backwards but slowing down. What do you think, Cooper? It's the bottom one. You think it's this one? Can I have a vote for that one? Why do you think it's that one? Because you're going at a fast pace and you're slowing down as you move back. Yeah, I'm covering a big distance, right? I start far away, I get really close, but then I get less close, less close. Yeah, it's exactly that one. Nice job. If I'm coming backwards but slowing down, the graph is going to be getting flatter. If I imagine this is like a cross country race or something, let's say I started at the starting point and then started going backwards, slowing down. What would that graph look like? Can you go backwards from the starting line? Just like, is it physically possible? Yeah, it's physically possible. Your displacement would be negative. 
So we don't have to start far away. If you do this and go backwards, you can have graphs that go into the negative region. So displacement can be negative. I'll just mention that, okay? So then the other way we can go backwards, but speed up, which is gonna be this one, right? Which I think is, for some reason, this one's negative. Also, these all say distance. They should not say distance. I made these like two years ago and they were wrong, so sorry. I just haven't changed them. So here, I started at zero. I went backwards, I covered a small distance, then I covered a little more distance, then a little farther, 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 farther every second. So I'm speeding up. Is that all the combinations? Forward, backward, speeding up, slowing down, constant speed. Did we do all those combinations? What are we missing? Well, we can combine them, yeah. But is there, like we can do different ones at different times. I think we've done all the combinations. What if I'm not moving? Why do I have this like twice? Okay. Not moving. What would that look like? Staying in the same spot. Does time stop? Time keeps moving forward, but, you're not but my displacement is just a flat line. So if I'm looking at this graph specifically, I'm at five meters and I'm just standing five meters away from the starting point, right? Time is still happening, but my distance from the starting point, my displacement is just five. Right? If they start the race and I just stand on the starting line, I would just have a flat line right here, right? I'm not getting any farther away. Cool. Okay, let's summarize what we've seen here. There's a few patterns I want us to notice. Some patterns that I think will be helpful. Look at all of your graphs that are moving forward graphs. What do all of the forward moving graphs have in common? I think there's three of them. They're going in an upward direction. They all go up, right? If I'm moving forward, then I'm getting farther away from my starting point, right? The question is, am I going at a constant speed? Am I speeding up or am I slowing down? But regardless of my speed, if I'm moving forward, I'm getting farther away. So moving forward, they all have increasing displacement. The graph goes up. What about my backwards graphs? If I'm moving backward, they all go down in some way. If I'm going down at constant speed, it'll look like that. If I'm speeding up, it looks like that. If I'm slowing down, it looks like that but they're all going down. Yeah, it does. Or a copy page. Do we see that pattern? Okay. Now let's look at the, there's two graphs for speeding up. Look at your two graphs for speeding up. What did they have in common? both curved, but they both curve in a similar kind of way. Give me one minute. Let me finish this. Someone see it? There's two speeding up graphs on your notes. What do they have in common? They're going opposite directions because there's one forward, one backward. But if I'm speeding up, there's a common thing that the graph does. It curves what direction? One goes up, one goes down. We're looking at this graph and this graph. They both curve, they're going opposite directions, but what are they both doing? my 
my mind. Yes. They are curving away from the x-axis. Are they getting steeper or flatter? <laughs> steeper or flatter? Right, if I imagine there's like a ramp, that's pretty steep. And then this is also getting steeper, yes? They're getting steeper in opposite directions, but they're both getting steeper. If I'm speeding up, the graph gets more steep. It gets more vertical. If I'm slowing down, I either have this graph or this graph. Markers are sad. This one or this one is slowing down. What do those graphs have in common? They're getting, say it loud and proud, Alison. Flatter. The graph is getting flatter. Oh, I can't type. The graph are getting flatter. Graph getting flatter. If you're slowing down, the graph gets more flat or it gets more horizontal. about any of this okay I want us to practice recognizing how to look at a graph and interpret it to understand what type of motion is happening okay let's do some practice on your notes try to make your own graph that has these three things happening in that order try to show a graph that has these three things happening in this order forward constant speed, what does that look like? Straight line, and then I stop. So if I stop, time keeps moving forward, so I have a flat section, and then if I speed away, then it curves getting steeper, right? So this is my constant speed, is gonna look something like that. If I stop moving, time keeps going, so I have a flat section, but then if I speed away, the graph should be getting steeper. Make sense? I'm walking down the street, constant speed. I stop to tie my shoe, so I'm not moving. And then a dog jumps the fence and starts chasing me, so then I gotta speed away and get faster as I go. Right? So you can make a little story out of your graph if you want. You okay with that? Last thing I want to talk about is slope. I want to look at the slope of these graphs and see <laughs> if the slope means anything for our graph. Okay, what is slope again? 
That's how you calculate it, but what does it mean? If I say like this graph has a really high slope and this graph has a really low slope, what am I talking about? Can you show me with your arm? If I had a really high slope, what would that graph look like? This. If it had a low slope, what would that look like? This. Or I could even go negative. So what am I describe when I say slope? What am I trying to describe about the graph? Mm, not on some graphs, but just in general for any graph about anything, slope would be how. Read my mind. So with an S. Rhymes with steep. Steep. <laughs> It has to do with how steep the graph is, right? If I have a high slope, I have a really steep graph. If I have a low slope, I have a very flat graph. Yeah? Okay, so we've got time and displacement. Slope is the steepness of a line. Calvin said that if I want to calculate slope, I do rise over run. What does that mean? Right, I go up so many on the y-axis and then it goes over so many on the x-axis, okay? Another way I could represent that is with these symbols here. Delta Y divided by delta X. Yes, I know it's a triangle, but it's also a Greek letter. That's a Greek letter called delta. What does delta mean in math world? Anyone know? Yeah? No. In math world, delta means change. So this is the change in the y-axis divided by the change in the x-axis, which is my rise over my run, okay? Different ways of saying it. Well, hold on a second. If we're looking at this specific graph with displacement and time, what is on the y-axis? For what we're talking about today? Look at your notes, what's on the y-axis? Displacement. Displacement over time. So delta y over delta x would be the change in displacement over the change in time. Wait a second. Displacement over time. Distance over time. That sounds familiar. What's distance over time? What? Speed. Or the velocity. Oh my gosh. So what we're saying here is the slope of the line equals the velocity. If I can calculate the slope of the line on this type of graph, that is the velocity of the object. Kind of crazy. On a displacement versus time graph, the slope equals the velocity. It's kind of nifty. Jensen, do you need to turn it off? I don't have to. I'm not going to take it away. I just, it's in there. It's in there. If it was you, I'd just ask you to turn it off. May I see if it is mine? Yes. It's in there. Well, Cooper says it's in the other room. It's, it's in the other Okay, well, then don't worry. It, okay. It sounds like it's probably on the other room. Okay. Mine, I'm not. Mine is shut off. Uh, the webs we weave. All right, anyway. Okay. Um, side note before we're done. Can you have negative slope? Is that a thing on a graph? Yes. So you can, you can, right? Negative slope means it's going down, right? Can you have negative velocity? Is that a thing? We literally talked about it yesterday. Remember the train and the elevator? Yes. Uh, yeah. You can have negative velocity. What does negative velocity mean? Forgotten everything. It means you're going backwards or down or to the left. So negative slope means negative velocity, which means backwards. Wait a second. Look at your graphs. What do all the backwards graphs have in common? They're going down. They're going down. 
they have a negative slope. Oh my gosh. It all fits together, right? If I have a graph with a negative slope, according to this, that means I have a negative velocity, which means my graph is gonna be going down, which means it's going backwards. All of these ideas fit together in this graph. Mind blown. I think it's kind of cool. It all fits together perfectly. Negative slope, negative velocity, moving backwards, graph going down. Positive slope, positive velocity, moving forward, graph going up, right? All of these ideas fit together. Cool? All right. We have a short amount of time, so how about we do a short worksheet? I can give you the long worksheet because I got two. Or should we do the short one? We'll do the long one tomorrow.